you see what, what what's next for Sheila? What's next for um, your life, your career, your path mm. as you as you project looking backwards? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes it's so hard to see ahead mm. uh, from this very uh, haziness that it, corruption, it, it, you yeah, know, presents. Uh, presents. Yeah. Um, but you have to look ahead, even as we plan ahead mm. in mm. the fight against corruption, you mm. have to look ahead. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for one, in terms of the fight against corruption, mm -hmm. as I said, we continue pushing the needle in terms of um, issues around leadership and integrity. For me, it's really central. Mm -hmm. Um, work around transparency in procurement because public procurement is, mm -hmm. a, is, is, is a key, can I say, it's the epicenter of corruption in this country. Mm -hmm. That's where we lose resources. Mm -hmm. They say that almost 30% of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our national budget is lost in corruption mm -hmm. and it's lost through public procurement. Mm -hmm. Budgeted corruption is now a, a phenomenon we have to address. Mm -hmm. How do we lose, uh, how does corruption occur? In, in the in the budget making policy mm -hmm. you know uh, processes because mm -hmm. that's where it's going it's now not open but mm -hmm. very covert hidden there mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, corruption is always changing mm -hmm. it's, it's a very dynamic mm -hmm. you know it's a moving target mm -hmm. so while you're putting your act together and saying okay this is how we'll address it mm -hmm. it changes the right. people change right yeah uh new more people are coming into mm -hmm. it Mm. And, and the nature of corruption is changing. Mm. So you also mm. have to make yourself very dynamic mm. and be quick to, to, mm. to, 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 to recreate mm -hmm. and innovate. Mm. So I think for us, it's about you know, just looking at what are the trends, mm. innovating, because I think now is a you know, technology, using technology to mm. fight, ensuring mm. that there's transparency, mm. access to information and wider engagement of mm. citizens. That is mm. important, giving them platforms to report mm. corruption. That is really key. Mm. But I think one of the areas I would really be interested in looking at, particularly because I'm very passionate about young people and how they participate mm. in fighting corruption, mm. we'd want them to be corrupted. So there's a whole thing. For me, as I said, I'm very much invested in the preventing aspect mm. because the whole thing about value education, yeah. Yeah. how do you, how are we creating the next crop of citizens, mm. you know, mm. you know, those five-year-olds, mm. you know, those, those, those young kids. Mm. And for me, there's a strong aspect around role modeling mm. um, that has to be you know mm. that has to be really fashioned mm. and developed so how are we role modeling at mm. home how mm. what are we showing our kids so mm. they're not going to be these people that we are now seeing in mm. leadership mm. uh living lies telling lies mm. hate mongering mm. and, and so on stealing mm. from the public mm. who want a different crop of leaders mm. but it has to start from us at home mm. you know um there's a whole aspect around behavior change because mm. now there are people now yes they have already been shown the other side of mm. corruption and you can see how young people talk it's now all about fast life mm. The mm. easiest, we call it soft life. Mm. Mm. You know, unfortunately, sometimes the aspect of soft life is mm. about getting money, mm. quick money. Mm. You know, wash, wash and all mm. that. It's about mm. engaging in corruption. So mm. the whole aspect, working with the youth, mm. behavior change. Mm. Behavior change for me is, is key. Mm -hmm. And trying to come up with a very um, uh, effective model for behavior change mm. around anti-corruption. Mm. Um, so I think that's one of the areas I would really like to look at so that we can be able to strengthen mm. our prevention efforts. As I said, mm. it's not admirable or easy to now mm. start getting to the point where money has been stolen and now mm. you're chasing the thief mm. in court. Because these people are very, they get all the, the best battery of lawyers. Mm. Yeah, and then so scaling those high walls that defense teams put mm. in court becomes very difficult. Mm. And that's why we've lost a lot of mm. cases. So it becomes mm. difficult. But um, so for me, that's where I see the fight mm. against corruption mm. really needing to move mm. uh, and also getting to a point where citizens are very much empowered because, you know, see, at, as TI or other civil society organizations, we mm. cannot be everywhere. Mm. You know, we can only we, we, we can only do something small and then yeah. we are also we're also limited by our resources. Mm. That's the reality. And resources are, are, are going to shrink further. Right mm. now, they've shrunk in the last 10 years, mm. you know they're getting fewer and fewer mm. uh w w there's less resources for governance work mm. but we also have to be innovative mm. so look at other places for to get resources mm. but also see how others can be empowered mm. so those citizens in the local communities mm. what tools do they have especially in terms of social accountability right. how can they do uh, you know the budget monitoring mm. social audits as well to ensure that money that has been said to mm. have had come from nairobi treasury mm and went to build a road in, mm. in, in, in Ukambani or, mm. or, or Mount Kenya somewhere, mm. was actually used for the intended purposes mm. and for the exact specifications of that yeah. road or building. Yeah. You know, so training citizens to be on the lookout for that mm. because we can't be able to do that, mm. you know, everywhere, we can't. Mm. So I think for me, that's another area that we need mm. to look at. But mm. I think for me as Sheila as well, mm. um, 
I, I, of course, I will. I'm, I'm very passionate about the work at TI, although it gives me the white hair. Yeah. So maybe in two years, I'll have a full head of white <laughs> hair. <laughs> it's okay, it comes with age and mm. also the, the, the work. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, for as long as the, 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 uh, the board continues to have confidence in mm -hmm. me and to they appoint me again to mm. continue the work, I would mm. be happy to continue mm. because I am very passionate about this work. Mm -hmm. But also, you also have to think about, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a time where you also mm. have to give, you mm. know, way, as, as I've also been given mm. the opportunity. There's mm. someone who had to leave for me mm. to get this opportunity mm. to also lead. Mm. So... I mean, the end game is, of course, that you're also building mm. the next crop of leaders mm. who will come with new ideas mm -hmm. and, and sustain the organization even mm. more. Mm. So that time will come. Mm. And I, I think for me, I, I'm still very much interested. Well, I've not done much writing. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I started, as I mm. said, when I started my story, mm. I, I, knew, I knew I was going to be this best-selling author. Mm. Hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still have the only books I have are those I, I hand wrote 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. But I would really want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. I think, especially now that in this last, um, I think this is my 18th year. Mm -hmm. I've done 18 years of working. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with my 19th year. Mm. So I, I think I have a lot of experiences mm. from mm. the work with ICL and mm. HIV AIDS, mm. my work in the media, mm. on elections, on governance. I think mm. there are lots of stories to mm. be told. Mm. And I'd like one day to mm. just put them together. Mm. Not, I mean, just to, mm. to write from my from a very, you know, experiential mm. perspective, mm. how, you know, how right. they govern about governance. Mm. Also, I'd like to research a little mm. bit more, mm. write a little bit more mm. about governance mm. in, 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 in governance working Kenya mm. from a very practical mm. perspective mm. so I, I yeah I would like to be part of you know just continue with writing mm. <laughs> and I don't know that to say continue because now I stopped mm. so and, mm. and now the writing I Restart. do is, is writing is very technical, technical or very yeah. short short mm. short short little articles mm. um and, and but I'm I'm very much interested mm. still in the governance mm. and development mm. sector. For mm. me, this was just mm. this was just my space. Yeah, this was yeah. just my space, yeah. and I would still I'm still interested yeah. and invested. So, yeah. whatever work I'll be doing, whether it's writing, yeah. research, yeah. I, academia, whatever, mm. I know it will still be mm. around you mm. know governance mm. and and development. Mm. That's that's mm. this is really my passion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it oozes out of you. And I think whether it will be in writing, whether it will be in media, whether it will be as um, through the work that you're doing at Transparency yeah. International, your impact continues and will far outlive you and has been absolutely important. And uh, the fact that you're even sharing this story here and you're sharing your years of those 16, 18, no, now 40 years of experience, yeah. because experience is not just when you're working, it's also even exactly. when you're building the experience to come to work. Mm. Um, uh, I respect that yeah. uh, you have had the time, you've had the uh, courage, you've had the articulation to mm -hmm. also share it remarkably well as a, you're a storyteller by heart. So oh, really? I yes. didn't know that. And I didn't know that until I came here. <laughs> I remember I told you I don't have a story. <laughs> no, you, 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 your story is remarkable. Your story is amazing. So I give you now, you know, um, I have like maybe just one or two last few questions left for yeah. you that are very... Um, uh, just how we wind this up and land this uh, ship. Um, the first one being just an opportunity for you to uh, mm. tell your younger self anything that you probably would have mm. told uh, Sheila as you're growing up mm. and any uh, other Sheila who's probably growing up right now. Mm -hmm. Anything that you know you would you would tell uh, a Sheila that's, mm. that's growing up or a Sheila that mm. looking back at the Sheila that was growing up. Well, looking back at the Sheila that was growing up, as I mentioned, that I had, I knew that my life was going to take a certain path. You know, I, you, you heard a lot about writing, journalism, and then this happened. I, I, I just fell in love with, with the governance work and became very invested in, in governance and corruption issues in this country. And so sometimes allow yourself, it's okay, if you're, you may start thinking of your you know, path in one particular direction. But sometimes things happen and it shows you that there's actually another direction where you could have even a greater impact in, in, in not just um, your, the life of your family, but even, you know, an entire country. So I always encourage people, don't be locked. You know, don't think that this is the only thing I can do. You know, you can start off with doing something and then veer off completely, you know, maybe come back to it. And I think for me, it's about being flexible and open. 
and also taking the opportunities for growth um, because I always say that if I didn't take up these opportunities because for many young people and I see them making this mistake um, you're given the opportunity maybe you're told do this additional responsibility and you're thinking ah where's the money am I going to get additional salary for it I always warn young people that don't think about the money yes the money is important to get you through life but that experience is also important for me i would say i'm a product of of um horizon there's vertical growth but there's also horizontal growth where you're, you're you're picking up things that you know you you you're, you're learning on the job and for me i am this product the product that you see here today is a product of horizontal growth i allowed myself to take up additional responsibilities without even asking for any extra um income uh, and that is how I was able to learn and now grow into leadership. That is how it comes. So I encourage young people out there, that young Sheila out there, um, take those opportunities, jump at those opportunities, throw yourself into the deep end of the, of the water, you know, push yourselves beyond the edge, you know, beyond the comfort zone. That is how you will really, really grow mm. in your life and your career. Mm. Fantastic. And, and, and which, who are the other one, two, or three aspirational other leaders or key practitioners in the development mm. field uh, do you think should be seated here on the development dynamics mm. uh, with Maxi's channel of our platform uh, mm. sharing uh, their story of inspiration, their story of uh, their journey as well mm. in this space, you know, um, as we were probably speaking earlier, mm. uh, the, the stories of celebrities, stories of politicians, stories of mm. business leaders mm. are told at times in depth you know in this kind of depth uh you've just shared yours who else do you think should have the opportunity to share their the depth of their story mm. in this way that would have an impact mm. on on another person on another leader on another development mm. uh, practitioner or even on another younger uh, person who's coming up mm. I think the person i would like to hear more about their story is i, I mentioned him earlier in one of my in one of my uh narrations mm -hmm. uh is professor kimani njogu mm -hmm. he, he he is i met him as a professor of kiswahili mm. i told you he's one of the, yeah. the first class i attended yes. in ku of kiswahili yes. he yes, was yes. a lecturer right but now he's here in the development sector with us yeah. I, I i think he even left his kiswahili i don't know that he still goes back or teaches kiswahili yeah. i don't know whether he does that yeah but he's doing a lot in the development field yeah in terms of documenting, communicating, mm. and, 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 and helping a lot of governance institutions mm. um, and the, the NGO sector mm. in terms of documenting and communication. Mm. So I mm. always wondered what happened to mm. his Kiswahili, mm. uh, you know, well, uh, PhD. Yeah, yeah. You know, but for me, he was an example mm. of how, as I, as I said, you're, you know, you're mm. a product of your environment. And mm -hmm. I believe he is because mm. he started, I mean, mm. by 20 years ago, he was mm. in the classroom mm. teaching Kiswahili. Mm. And then now he's mm. out here right. uh, documenting things, right. sometimes being an activist mm. um, and, and really working mm. in, and, and, and doing good work in the mm. development sector. Mm. So I'd like to listen to his story because mm. I'm always inspired by people who started mm. on one track mm -hmm. and ended up on another mm. because I believe that they are good examples mm. for young people. Mm. Yeah, That's a good one. Mm. So we'll ask you for his contact yeah. and, 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 and link and um, look out for a potential uh, future episode yeah. featuring Dr. Uh, Professor Kimani, Professor Kimani, Kimani Njogu. Uh, Njogu. Uh, so thank you, Sheila. And and um, for your time, this has been an amazing time and yeah. a couple of hours. Uh, Development Dynamics with Maxi featuring Sheila Masinde.